Good morning everybody and hello to my humble abode. What I'd like to do today is to do a little bit of housekeeping. So the first thing I'm going to do is to connect the windmill power supplies to the, the power supply up here. So let's do that. What I need for that is a, some cable and a connector. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it to here. So let me just take my one of my silk touch hammers, pickaxes, doesn't matter very much. And then we can connect into here another connector, otherwise we won't be able to reach. So what we do is we put this red energy cable down here. We put on top of that a connector. And then this produces this um, connection plate that's part of the red net. And then for, we'll remove that though. What I shall do to remove that is simply right click it with the uh, present hammer and now it's gone. What I should be able to do is to put a grass block cover on top of it. So I'm not sure exactly how this is going to fit. It should be around about here. I can do it even. Oh. Doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do that today. This should work. But maybe I need another another cable to come out of here. Anyway. There's no dangers of uh, mobs getting in, so let's go and connect this up. So let's go to my chest, my back, back here. I want the hammer. And I'm going to remove this um, this side pole. I don't need that really. And that, therefore, I get another connector and another piece of wire. So what we're going to now do is to connect the wire onto the this import port here. So. Right click and right click. Now the power should then be coming from. Ah, that won't work because this is configured to be an input. So, what I'm going to have to do is to add another connector here. Let's add it to this side here. By shift right clicking, it should do the job. And then let's remove. Oh, I want to remove the wire. The trouble with, uh, it's not so easy to remove the wire. I need the wire because it's what I'll have to do is remove this connector here and reconnect it up again. Um, if I do it in time, try again. This is a pickaxe. So, I need to put that connector back first of all, don't I? Right. Now, let's get the cable. Since I've now got three instead of two, let's right click this one. Come to here. Right click that one. Come to here. Right click that one. And come down here and right click that. So now we're connected, but no power will be going into the, because this uh, energy cell is configured. So the inputs are, the outputs down at the bottom, which we'll make it on this side, which is yellow, which means it does nothing. And one more, and it's red. So now we should see the energy changing here. But the energy is going down slightly. If I was using a uh, high voltage or medium voltage, it would go down faster. So now that's supplementing the uh, solar panels, which is a good combination. Solar panels work best in the sun and windmills work best in storms. And you may wonder what I'm doing with these uh, landmarks. My intention is to build a new room because I've got rather a lot of oil from the oil well 
the oil well comes in from um, this tesseract here and this is full and the other end of the tesseract is outside over the corridor then let's have a look actually if I get out in this place if we go over here if we go over here what this was was a uh, oil squirting out of the, the sea and it was on fire I think so what I did is I built around it a whole load of um, stone blocks to put it out and here we have a pump this pumps on and it's attached to this tesseract and again the usual configuration here is at this stage it's sending fluids and receiving energy I'm not sure why I have a motor here I don't think I need it because the quarry doesn't need a motor so let's remove that mm. Pump the, oh, maybe the pump needs a motor. But you should get the power from the energy air. From that one. That's good. From here. So if I turn this off, that should then change its colour. Let's just disable that. I enabled. That oh, still says it's red. It's always on anyway. Right. Let's go back home. I'm slightly too far away for the uh, Travanka. It doesn't take very long. Oops. In a second, we should see the travel anchors appearing. There we are. And the other thing I've done is to automate some of the um, the coke boiler and the blast furnace so what I've done here oh, oh look what we've got there a block from a, a, an enderman here I have a hardened chest which is already full so we've now got 32 buckets of creosote and this is simply a, a, flu a hardened fluid duct with a, a servo a servo is simply just turned on. This is then connected from here to here with an item duct and in this filter I've set it up to use coal coke as a white listed item. So any coal coke should be only coal coke should go through this um, this, uh, this item duct. At the moment it's actually turned off so let's just turn this on which we can do by disabling the redstone control makes it light and we should see cold coke disappearing through there and coming into the blast furnace as you can see now it's seven and this will increase or uh, eleven uh, four at a time into the seven here into the blast furnace and at the other end of the blast furnace I've got another servo this time this is configured for stealing it so it doesn't pull any cold coke out white listed and that's also disabled so the steel will then come into this chest so we already have 42 steels isn't that good i shall just pick up this block i don't need that there so let's use inappropriate tool but it's fine and this was my demonstration as well so that's that automated what i need to know now of course is to increase the size of that tank we're going to end up with a lot of creosote in fact, I've been increasing tanks all day this today, so let's just take this tank here. And we need to make this at least uh, 32 buckets, so we need some inver ingots which are in this chest here. So we need four of those. I think I'm slowly running out of inver ingots. I have to make some more. So now I'm going to pick up this uh, 
this tank with using shift right click on the uh, crescent hammer and I'm going to put in its place the new tank which is here so put that into place 5 pressing 5 and put 5 down here and that will empty the tank out of here and so more coke can be produced when that gets full it stops producing coke in fact there's quite a large amount already into the 14 buckets so I shall put this creosote on the wall up here oops nearly this one actually what I've got in here is a tank with some manilium in it the problem I've got before I'm going the wrong way is I was going to make some manilium but left the redstone clock attached what's happened is that the uh, let's start at the top shall we what's happened is that it filled in this um, this casting basin with manilium and the switch was was here so it then forced the manilium to go down this uh, drain into this uh, channel so I have to now empty out the channel so the way to do that oops is to take a tank this was designed for this because I have done it lots of times put it on here and you can see this is now sh ah what have we got in here aha uh -huh. that's going to be a pain that's cobalt uh, ardite I think so let's go and get the ardite and cobalt tank just in case in here I've got cobalt so let's take that tank just in case it's separate this is the other tank and try again the first of all let's try the ardite tank yes now you saw what happened there it's, you can see that the fluid colors now changed here to being um, manilium and of course the casting place is now going to be full of uh, manilium so let's go upstairs and click this and that should then empty out the casting basin and everything is now in the tank and in here we should f oh, sorry, did I just do in here we should have some cobalt and we can empty that out as well and the way I do that is I put a tank over here cobalt tank is melt and cobalt the one pressing 5 just swaps it over so I press 5 on the keyboard again so now that's emptied so we can put these two tanks back Ah, uh, I think the cobalt tank fell into it. <laughs> it fell into the casting basin. So let's go downstairs. Get the manilium tank now. The thing I'm planning to do is to make a crossbow and demonstrate that. That's why I was preparing some more manilium for that. And the other thing I want to do is to um, show you how to add uh, modifiers to uh, Tinker Construct tools much more quickly. And what I've got here is an iron mattock, which has only got 15 out of 50 redstone. So what I can do to that now is to add some more redstone to it let's just take us some redstone and I'm also going to show um, how to increase the modifiers in fact I'm going to also put some la lapis on the uh, tool so one way to make this go faster is to use uh, blocks of um, redstone instead of um, redstones so here we have this mattock 
it's got one more modifier remaining and at the moment it's got uh, it's actually got 15 if I when I take it off here then it'll have 24 so what I can also do is to split this in two and this time we'll get 42 so let's do that so we can't do the last eight there we have to do the last eight like this so so this time it will give me 44 46 48 50 so now we have 50 modifiers so that's one way to do it a lot faster I'm going to do this this time we're going to do the same for lapis because I think that to a bit of luck and this will give me more seeds I think so I'm going to try that there's quite a lot of lapis that's required here 450 so I can put all this on so now we have 64 out of 400 and lapis what I can also do is to add another modifier to this at the moment it's full and what we're going to do is we're going to add one diamond and one block of gold and then that increases the modifiers so then it has one more modifier free what I'm going to do to this is to add another set of um, redstone to make it go even faster at the moment the mining speed is 9.46 so let's do this that's too many now so I have to take that off there So now we have 200 and the mining speed has gone up to 13.606. So let's have a look what difference that makes. And this is it's expensive but it's quite a good way to increase the, uh, the tool's abilities. Let's put the redstone back. And in here I've got some, I wanted to demonstrate a tough tool rod using steel to show you how to make a uh, a bolt so what I'm going to do now what I've been preparing here is a new room in order to um, for the tank so let's just go in here start to use this tool now you see it's going through this like butter really really fast and of course what I've got to do is I want to make this go out as far as this one so there we are isn't that fast what I've also built for a bit of uh, something different and you'll see this will now actually repair itself because when I get into range of the um, of the wireless charger what I've also repaired is some lux duct and it says if you apply redstone signal to lux duct it glows so let's just see we've got some soil in the way let's get rid of that soil what have I got to oh, an excavator perfect in fact, I'll get rid of the soil and replace that for a uh, stone. I should have plenty of stone, haven't we? So, let's apply redstone signal to this look in my head one switch and there we are now we have a new form of lighting wasn't that cool let's see how good that is so if I press 7 we have a few blocks over here which are most we need to put torches so we should put a torch over here in fact it seems to have quite a decent coverage and it doesn't look too bad let's put those back let's just take a couple of these um, unfortunately the, the shift and things don't work on right so that's now safe and I can now remove the redstone torches and the, and the um, landmarks One more. 
the room's not completely ready because I've got to go up quite a few levels before it'll be high enough for a full size tank but uh, what I wanted to show has been done how quickly this mining tool now works and I think that's all I wanted to show for this episode I hope you enjoyed it bye for now